This year, Mother Nature decided to jam an entire winter of snow, ice, rain, and brutally cold temperatures into a delightful three-week kickoff to 2024. We're used to winter. I mean, it happens every year, but this is really pushing it. Very cold today. Very, very cold. No there you go. That's not good. Not good at all. Well, I'm no plumber, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have ice in your pipes. Dad's got a problem with his machine shed. Probably can't see it on camera, but she's down a little bit in the middle. A little bit too much of that stuff. So we're on a rescue mission. You can see the problem right there. So that's one. Two. Three. <laughs> Not good. This building is 42 by 70. I think it's 10 foot tall at the eaves. Dad built this when I was in college. So 2005 to 2007 ish. And when I say built, I don't mean that he hired a contractor to build it. I mean, he dug every hole and pounded every nail and built it mostly by himself and mostly from salvage materials from another building that we took down. I helped do the pole layout and put the metal on the roof and my brother helped build and set the rafters. Technically, it's still not done, but Dad's kind of like me. He tends to stop at works and never gets all the way to done. The only thing first, though, when you get done here, Wes, I want you to look at this joint right here. Hard to see, but that outer wall is also bowed out. Let's do some armchair forensic engineering. The rafters are made from standard dimensional lumber. The joints or the nodes are connected with pieces of plywood that are glued and nailed to both sides. They are homemade rafters and I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments that they were not built correctly and I'm sure you're right, but they were built to a professionally engineered and stamped drawing. This is an agricultural building. There's no building code. There's no inspection. This is a common building technique in our area. The problem started when we got a bunch of wet, heavy snow. Then it got super cold and that snow basically turned to ice and it was stuck to the roof. Then we got a whole bunch more snow on top of that, but it was powdery, it wasn't as heavy. And there was a lot of snow on the roof, but everything should have been okay. The roof is designed to handle 30 pounds per square foot of snow load, which is a lot of weight. That's about 45 tons on the roof of this building. The real problem came when we got a bunch of rain. That powdery snow just absorbed the rain like a sponge. 
and then it too became wet, heavy snow. And we estimate that there could have been as much as 60 pounds per square foot of snow load, which is double what the building is designed to support. Just for perspective, that's about the weight of two Caterpillar D9 dozers on the roof of the building. It was too much, and something had to give. The recovery plan is pretty simple. Jack it up and nail it back together. I'm gonna hang on to this, it's gonna fall out when I yeah, pinch it. Okay, there we go. It's gotta go up four inches. No, I'll leave off. Two and a half. And get the railroad jack up. We're gonna have to do this on the same line. Okay. Right here. Pull <laughs> Where's your hard hat? Pants. Gotta leave yourself a nice handsome corpse. Not be perfect. I mean they'll they'll probably okay. So that's the person. Yeah, I think we go to that one and try to pull it back together. Which one do you want to do first? This one in the middle. This one here? Yep, the one that's coming apart at the top. All right. I don't like that. I don't like that either. What? Up there at the top, there's it, it's pulling the two so, apart. We also had to pull the bottom cord back together. And we have to do that while we're jacking it up. And we have to do all four broken rafters at the same time, or else it gets kind of squirrely. Should hold it. I don't know, man. Kind of got to two-hand it. There, now switch your hand to the other. Don't you have to kind of like three-hand it? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a pain. There you go. This one's not really separated though. Three-eighths. About, you're down to about a quarter. Keep going. It's still, yeah, it's still about three-eighths. Yeah, now it's coming. Let's see. Oh yeah. Did it? Yep, I see it moving. Keep going, you're getting it. How much tension you got? this whole thing. Well, none, none of this is up to code or approved by any sort of regulating OSHA. body. No, no, OSHA here. Well, you're not wearing a high visibility vest or a hard hat. Hard hat. Steel toe shoes. Where's your fall protection? That's a good sign. If we pull it together enough to take the tension off the middle. All of them have done that. That's good enough. Yep, reckon so. Okay, cool.
this is a important part of the procedure so it's only failed four times before <laughs> right okay we're gonna bolt that one and be done with it then mm-hmm So you pull the heads in just a little bit and the washers in just a little bit and that's the best you can do. I don't want to pull them clear through. Yeah, now the glue's coming out. Yeah, that's what we want. Well, I, like I told those guys yesterday, I need to be out of here shuffling this off. I make them out and see what it's doing, but I'm not going to be in there. Good. Yeah, that'll okay. Work. Good enough, guys. Put away whatever you need and leave whatever you can. And where'd you get that? You up? That what? You up? With the rafters secured, I was curious. Why didn't the building collapse? It had every reason to end up like this poor guy's building. So what makes this building different? I think a big part is the whole west end is framed with these big steel beams. Those were for a bridge crane that was never installed, but it basically makes one third of the building bulletproof. Another factor is these knee braces. These aren't really used anymore. They're kind of a pain if you want to finish the inside of your building, but they really add a lot of strength. And the last thing is, remember I said this building was built from salvage materials. It was actually built from a mini storage building that was a lean-to construction, so it didn't have truss rafters. Instead, it had long roof beams, and my dad reused those, so the top cord of the rafters are continuous, like 24-foot-long 2x10s. There's no joints, and that adds a whole lot of bending strength to the rafters. I stopped by about a week later. This is my great grandma's car. It's a 66, I think, Plymouth Belvedere. We'll do a video about it someday. Dad's been busy. He's beefed up all the connections on the bottom cord. And then there's a number of other connections that were kind of dodgy or that had actually slipped that are gonna be reinforced. And I think all of them will eventually be connected with carriage bolts. It doesn't really matter how it fits, it's just a spacer. And the other piece completely will cover all this terribleness. All right. We'll leave the jacks and chains until all the bracing work is done and we're confident that the glue has set. It's all straight and level and strong. He got extremely lucky, and in a few days, the building can go back in service, and in my opinion, it's better than it was before this happened. Speaking of better, we're enjoying some better weather, which I am not going to complain about. Thanks for watching, everybody. I know it's not the job you expected to see here. It's not the job I expected to do, but it's done, and we're moving on to the next one.